Hello, my name is uh, Stefano Bergonzini. I am a senior warrant officer in the Italian Carabinieri. As such, I've participated in uh, different um, uh, humanitarian and peacekeeping mission abroad. And uh, um, I'm currently working at the NATO Center of Excellence, where I fell into the remit of cultural property protection and uh, fell in love with it. And now I'm also doing it uh, privately. And it is in my private capacity that I'm here today. Um, I'm going to share some experiences and some ideas about why we need emergency plans. This is the layout of the presentation. It's going to be four periods of about uh, 15 minutes max. The first one is going to be why it's the core, why we deal with emergency plans. The second one is actually in two parts because it's the largest one about how to develop a plan. The third one is useful resources you might need or we might use to actually create a plan. And then something about networking and uh, um, a summary at the end. Why plan? Do you even have an emergency plan? If you're responsible for a collection, how much of this collection are you ready to lose because you have not prepared in time? If this is your plan, then we are not in a very good position. But don't worry, we are going to uh, give you uh, good possibilities and uh, tools to actually redact your plan. This is an image I always like to present as the image of failure. This is somebody who was very smart, a very knowledgeable person, great dreams, great lover of knowledge of science. And uh, he acted uh, rashly without having a proper plan, without being properly prepared, having the resources. And then he found himself in a situation where not only he was not able to get what he wanted, but he caused the destruction of what he cherished. Please do not become like this. I, I wish we'd never been in such a position. And the complete opposite spectrum, we have this gentleman you might have heard of. Captain Sullenberger took off uh, with an airliner full of passengers from New York airport and at very low eleva uh, elevation, one of the worst conditions a pilot can find himself in, they struck some geese, lost both his engine, now he has a full plane of passengers and he needs to decide how to actually save them. And he does exactly what he has been preparing his whole life to do. He acts out, he asks for help, he's talking to, interacting with his uh, uh, co-pilot, he's acting with uh, traffic control, he's go getting back to all these hours of training and simulation that prepared him for even unexpected situation. This one he probably had never tried before. He's evaluating his option and then he chooses one and brings it down, brings the plane down, splashes into the Hudson River, and actually all passengers are safe. This is the way to actually, how to approach. Other examples that might uh, illustrate why it is important to plan and to prepare to save cultural property is the destruction of the Brazil National Museum. Over 20 million uh, pieces were lost, some of them irreplaceable. Why? Because there was no proper plan, the uh, material had not been prepared, there was confusion, the, 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 the intervening uh, fire personnel were not, had, had not trained properly to actually uh, solve this sort of situation. You have a similar case at uh, the fire in Notre Dame, where actually very good results were achieved where 90% of the mobile pieces, the movable pieces, were actually saved out of the burning cathedral. Why? Because the personnel, they had a plan, they had the material, they had tried that plan, and they were able to actually be successful in their endeavor. Let's look at some of the threats that might actually uh, um, threaten our uh, cultural property, our collections. A volcanic eruptions and uh, following tsunami, as in Tonga, or an earthquake, as was the case uh, in, in Turkey, that actually triggered a possible uh, tsunami warning. Uh, 
There was the floods in Florence in 1966. The mud angels, civilians with no experience, they just volunteered to help. Obviously, they did not have the expertise to do the things properly. Recent floods, even now ongoing in uh, northern Italy. Fire or avalanches. Even just uh, a, opening our exhibitions for the public create a problem. And there is this dichotomy between, on the one hand, keeping our pieces safe and secure, and on the, on the other hand, open them for enjoyment and fruition, and some of them might even be damaged. Risk might come from industry or from the environment. Even willful damaging or graffiti can destroy our cultural property. Robberies, so crimes. Simple negligence when somebody bumps into the case and this art piece gets destroyed. Here you have a, a selection of very diverse threats that uh, you might encounter, we might think of as the proprietor of, of a collection or uh, working, for example, for a museum. And uh, the same, the same uh, case, the same uh, topic, the same happening can have very different uh, outcomes. Try to imagine if your access system is out of order, if it's the day before the day of the closure of the museum, no problem. If it is Monday morning, well, the problem starts to become bigger because uh, tourists and people who want to join will not be able to access. Now, it is the day of uh, the opening of a huge ex exhibition and you're awaiting the Minister of Culture, then the consequences are going to be even uh, larger. When we are thinking of threats that menace our cultural property, we need to be very invented, uh, imaginative. Uh, try to think of different cases that can happen. Who would think that an Egyptian piece from the Museum of Cairo could actually be threatened by avalanche? Not if you're thinking that it's being moved through the Alps, actually this situation might even happen. And we need to think about those cases. Let's give it a little bit of a structure. We have uh, knowledge of the crisis management cycle. The thing is, we don't really know in which phase uh, at, at present we are. I hope that at present we are in the preparation phase or even in the mitigation phase. So we have no indication of, of dangers, of approaching risks or uh, possibly dangerous events for our collection. When an event actually happens, immediately afterwards is the response phase where we are uh, called to face the, the threats, the situation that has developed, high water, the uh, pipe that burst into our building, and this threatening is damaging, is destroying our, our collection. Once that the, the, the immediate phase, the response is, is finished, then we, we glide into the recovery phase. We're trying to actually uh, remedial action to uh, improve the situation, to reconstruct, to, to restore the pieces, get them back so they can be used again. Then we have a mitigation phase. We even in the color is actually very green. It's, it's a very positive phase. In this phase, we're actually looking at making our collection less vulnerable and less in danger from different sort of threats. In the preparation phase, we are already thinking, okay, some things might actually happen. Uh, even better, if we have warnings and we have timely warnings that gives us some time, we have an idea, you know, high water, there's just heavy rains uh, um, upstream that creates the, uh, a possible uh, flood situation. Okay, we can already start taking some, some measures to actually keep our collection safe. And then when the situation happens, if we have prepared, then probably the responsive phase is going to be easier and the damages are going to be more limited. We really need to get ready before the emergency strikes. Unfortunately, when we are in the emergency, during the disaster management, time is the only element that we cannot procure. If we look at an emergency and evacuation plan, why do we need an emergency plan? Well, because a plan gives us a structured approach, it gives us a flexible approach. 
uh, we can look at a different set of and range of contingencies, different sort of problems. We have the time to actually assess them, discuss them, get knowledge, uh, even get the skills, acquire the skills, prepare the material, prepare ourselves, prepare the collections, our building. All this without being under a time pressure, which then happens when, when the emergency starts. So if we are to ask ourselves again, why do we need to, uh, to uh, develop a plan? Well, the first thing is, okay, we, want, we need to be decisive. We want to take a decision and actually take action. Just thinking about it does not cut it. Then we can assess the situation, assess what we have, what the possible threats are, and then how we are going to actually face those, those threats with what we have and in case to actually procure what we need. Then we are going to go into the details of developing a plan that gives us the structured approach. We're going to try this, this plan out. We're going to implement it. We're going to see what the problems are, what, what things we have not uh, completely thought through, how we can improve it, and then we start anew. And this actually concludes the first block. Thank you.